Shimai Paub, hello everyone. Croeso uh, Canasian, very warm welcome to my wild Welsh garden. Well, today's video is a little bit different. It's a video that I've wanted to make um, ever since I started the channel, really. And it's taken me this long to sort of uh, sort it out, really. So I hope you enjoy it. It's um, We're going on a, a jaunt, and I do know that some of you like it when I take you on jaunts, but this one is quite a long one, so it's going to take up the whole video. And um, yeah, I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions. But to me, it seems pretty obvious why nature is has declined so much in Wales over the past 50 years or so. Uh, but before we go, I just want to show you a couple of things in the garden. So you know how I've been banging on about the importance of larval food plants? Well, down here by the side of the polytunnel in all this wild bit, there's some really horrible looking scratchy bits of hedge garlic that most people, and I would have previously, would have just pulled them up and thrown them away. But I have caterpillars. Yeah, so these few little horrible looking plants, I've managed to support at least two orange tip butterfly caterpillars. And I have red poppies. I must have sown poppy seeds at some point over the last seven years. And every year, a couple pop up. These two have just opened, just within the last hour. How lovely are they? I've come up to a local nature reserve. It's a bit higher up the Swansea Valley, just inside a Banai Brachainiog, the national park. The weather's not brilliant, but it's okay. I'm standing on part of the Beacons Way. This is a National Nature Reserve. It's also a triple SI, so it's a site of special scientific interest because of the rare flora. So Ogofan and V means the cave of the Black Spring because underneath here is a very extensive caving system which I have no intention of ever going into. But I'd heard about this reserve. Uh, it says an impressive range of plants grows on the limestone areas of the reserve. And then there's the ring oozel, there's the dark green fritillary, to all these lovely plants to look for. Wild thyme, lily of the valley, wood anemone, tormental herb robert, mossy saxifrage, Lily of the Valley, Hearts Tongue Fern, all these things. And then it says, see if you can spot the rarest plant here, hairy greenweed, a yellow flowered relative of gorse and broom, which is found at only two other sites in Wales. And then it says, later in summer, there's small scabious and autumn gentian. And in the autumn, see a burst of colour when the heather is in flower amongst the bilberry, crowberry, lichens and mosses on the open moorland. I mean, doesn't it sound lovely? So I came up here looking for these lovely plants in the spring and I couldn't find any of them. And I thought, oh, well, it's, you know, it's just me. Well, I'm looking in the wrong place. I'm looking at the wrong time. I don't know what I'm looking for. Uh, any combination of all those. And then I couldn't find any nice burst of colour in the autumn either. Just the monochrome fields of millennia, purple moorgrass. So just green in the summer and brown in the autumn and winter. And I've since learnt that this is just classic overgrazing by sheep because the sheep have eaten all the other plants that should be in the moorland here with the millennia. So they've eaten the bilberry and the heather and the crowberry and the cowberry and all the lovely moorland flowering plants and the finer, sweeter grasses and they've just left the millennia because they don't like that. But if you look around now, you can see that there are no sheep. They've all gone. They've all been taken off. 
and thereby hangs quite a long tail. Well, I'm going to head up to the limestone pavement where all the rare plants are supposed to be and I'll tell you the story and uh, I won't tell you as I'm walking along because I do get a bit out of breath but I, every so often I have to pause to look at the view and uh, I'll talk to you then. Okay, back to the story. So a couple of years ago, so we're talking beginning of June 2023, I thought I'm determined to find these rare plants and so I came up looking and I couldn't find them. And I thought I'm going to contact Cavoyth Naturial Cymru, Natural Resources Wales, NRW. And so I filled in the complaint form <laughs> expecting to be ignored and I had a phone call within 24 hours from a new chap in post who absolutely agreed with me that um, yeah the, the reserve was a disgrace and uh, reassuring me that it was going to get better because the sheep were going. The farmer who they leased it to uh, to graze his sheep yes I'm not quite sure how that works that you designate something a national nature reserve because of the rare flora and then lease it to a farmer to graze his sheep on but anyway that's what they did um, but he didn't want to renew his lease and so at the beginning of spring last year the sheep went and all these flowers started appearing uh, where there were no flowers ever before So all along the sides of the path here, this was all grazed to sort of bowling green shortness. And now at the side of the paths, the moorland flora is all recovering. So the bilberry is sprouting. And here there's cross-leaved heath, this little pink flower. The little yellow flower is tormental. And the heather is beginning to recover. That's sprouting. And this year the bilberry has been allowed to flower and is forming fruits. And there's heath bed straw and ladies bed straw. Not quite out yet. And there's bird's foot trefoil and the wild thyme is just beginning to come out. And then along with all the flowers that were coming out, all the bees started appearing. I'd never seen so many bees up here. And it was really strange because if you remember last spring was so cold and wet in the UK, people were saying, but we're not seeing any bees, there are no bees. And I was thinking, well, there's plenty of bees up here. But of course, these are mountain bumblebees. These are used to the cold and wet. In fact, they've evolved to cope with it. Yes, what was limiting the numbers of these bees wasn't the weather, it was lack of food, lack of pollen and nectar, because there were so few flowers, because the sheep had eaten them all. But actually, this is one of the flowers that the sheep didn't eat. This is a thistle. So this is what kept them going. This is my last pause to look at the view because I've arrived on the pavement. So to continue with the story, I was chatting with the chap from Cavoyth Naturial Cymru and he said that there was restricted grazing on this part of the reserve. This is the limestone pavement where all the very rare plants are supposed to be and the hairy greenweed. And he said there was an agreement with the farmer that he would only graze his sheep on here in the winter. And I said, well, I don't think that's happening. There's sheep on now. And I sent him some photographs. And to cut a very long story short, we agreed that I would keep my eye on the pavement. And if I saw sheep on it, I would tell him and he would get onto the farmer to take them off. So that's what I did for the summer of 2023. So 
two years ago and so managed to keep the sheep off and then he very kindly agreed not to put them back on for the winter so this has actually been sheep free now since this time two years ago and then to help me to look for this hairy green weed the particularly rare plant that's only found in two other places in Wales he which is also called Janista pelosa he sent me a map of the pavement that had been done in a survey of 2011 I think which marked where these plants were found that one and also the lily of the valley with grid references so I walked all over this with the OS map uh, app on my phone and the grid references of where this hairy green weed was which is really difficult <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried it, but you, you, it's so difficult to walk in the right direction to make the numbers go the right way. And the thing is, I was looking for a shrub. This thing is, a, it's a dwarf shrub and it should be a foot tall, you know, sometimes two foot tall. So that's what I was looking for and I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I found this spot and I was on the exact spot of the grid reference on the map. And I thought, I must be standing on top of it and you know I literally was standing on top of it I just couldn't see it because it had just been eaten away and it's down here this is quite a big patch of it so these are the shoots they're a few inches long now but when I first came up there were hardly a sign of them And do you know, the wretched thing has gone over. It's supposed to have lovely, bright yellow flowers. And you can see the, f the flowers of, uh, are forming seed pods. There's some longer shoots here. I think these shoots did have a couple of flowers on last year. So maybe next year we'll have more flowers and I must remember to come up earlier. There is quite a lot of it around. Some shoots here with the seed pods. And just next door is the lily of the valley. Well, none of these leaves were visible. Yes, there's quite a few popping up now. The only place I could find any lily of the valley leaves were right down in the depths of the cracks and even then the tips had been munched off and sort of truncated the sheep couldn't get their faces right in and this was the only flower i could find and it's the only one that's flowering now i think these are going to take a while a few years maybe until they've recovered enough to flower but you know i'm so cross with this plant I spent all that time and effort finding it and looking after it and then it goes and flowers before I get a chance to see it. I don't know. But I'm just going to sit here next to my Janista. Do you know, I think of it as mine because I've had such a lot to do with it. And have some lunch and then head back down. Here I am, back in my garden, safe and sound, and there were two new red poppies waiting for me when I got home. So it just remains for me to thank you for watching the video, if you've got this far, and uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, oil vowel.